In your methodology chapter, you've probably explained what you did, but have you explained why you did it that way? The most common issue that I've come across in the last 20 years of supporting graduate students is that in the methodology chapter, they don't lay out the rationale for why they did what they did. The chapter is fantastic in covering the what, but it doesn't really cover the why. The reader can see that you chose snowball sampling as your sampling method, that you did semi-structured interviews, and that you analyze those interviews using thematic analysis. But why did you do those things? Why were those choices the best choices to make for your study? That's what the reader wants to know, and by reader I mean your examiner, so tell them. In this short video, I'm gonna tell you why the why matters and why the why not is also really important to consider. I'll make sure that you cover all of the bases by giving you some questions to ask and answer along the way. So first up, why the why matters. Why is it necessary to provide a rationale for the methodological choices that you've made? Well, it adds depth and credibility to your research. It helps you achieve transparency so the person reading your thesis knows the process that you've gone through in making the decisions that you've made in choosing particular options for your study. It helps paint a picture of consistency throughout your research so the reader can see how your research questions and how your aims are informing absolutely everything you've done. Your research aims and your questions are what you are going to be referring back to whilst you're explaining the why. Your research aims and your questions, they are like your North Star. They should be guiding pretty much everything you do when it comes to your research. They are the foundation of your study and they should influence every choice that you make. Next up, how you can use the why not to help you. Think about the other options that you considered but ultimately didn't pursue. Sometimes thinking about the why not actually helps you get a little bit more into the why. Say you decided to do online questionnaires rather than in-person questionnaires that somebody filled in with an interviewer. Why didn't you do the in-person questionnaires? Perhaps you wanted to give people more time to think about their answers. Maybe you wanted to minimize any researcher bias or any dynamics that might impact on people's responses. Maybe you wanted to encourage people to share their views freely without the fear of being judged by another person like the interviewer. And in tackling the why not, you've actually got some useful material for your why there. Here are some questions that you can ask yourself when you're explaining the choices that you made in terms of sampling, data collection and analysis, and ethics. So get ready to take some screenshots, let's have a look through them. First up, sampling. How do the unique characteristics of your sample serve your research questions and aims? So what criteria have you used to choose participants or cases that support your aims and your research questions? How does your specific sample size align with your research questions and aims? So large sample sizes might be appropriate for identifying patterns or trends. Small sample sizes might align with wanting to understand and access meanings and lived experiences. How is your sampling method conducive to answering your research questions and achieving your aims? So some of the more scientific positivist methods like random sampling, quota sampling, they align with aims to identify patterns or trends, whilst purposive or snowball sampling, which is more commonly associated with interpretivist research, that might be more appropriate for understandings and meanings. Did you consider alternative sampling methods and why did you opt for this one? In what ways does this align most closely with your research questions and aims? So why not choose the other methods? Always remember the why not here. It does help you tackle the why. Next, let's take a look at some questions about data collection and data analysis. How does your choice of data collection and analysis methods serve your aims and your research questions, both individually and collectively? How do they work well together? So why does collecting data and analyzing data in this way support your aims? What is it about these techniques that helps you achieve what you set out to achieve? Why is this combination of data collection and analysis the more favorable one for addressing your research questions and your aims? So how does your data collection and analysis work in tandem? For example, you've done a large scale questionnaire to 1,000 people and you've combined that with descriptive and analytical statistics. Why did you do that? Another example, in-depth interviews with 10 people that you analyze through narrative analysis. 
Why did you do that? How did it help you serve your aims? What advantages did this offer over the other possible options in relation to your research aims and questions? So why was this the best approach to data collection and analysis? And lastly, research ethics. How did your particular ethical choices in your research emerge from and relate to your research questions and aims? So how important were specific ethical principles? Was it vital, for example, that your participants trusted you because of the nature of what they were sharing? And as such, which ethical principles helped you with that? How did these ethical considerations protect the rights and well-being of your participants whilst at the same time enabling you to meet your research aims and answer your research questions? Were there any conflicts between your research questions and aims and maintaining ethical integrity in your research? So to recap, the points we've covered in this video are firstly, why the why matters. Secondly, why the why not is kind of important for that. And thirdly, I've given you some questions to ask when you are justifying the choices that you've made and explaining why in terms of sampling, data collection and analysis and ethics. I hope you found that helpful and feel free to drop your questions in the comments. I'll be back in a few days with another video on navigating the messy and the magical and the ups and the downs of PhD life. I'll see you then.